Hey there gardeners, I thought it was past time that I gave you an update on the hydrangea cuttings I took a while back. And so there's a little bit of a process to explain exactly what happened here, but um, I goofed up. I screwed up my first batch of cuttings and what happened is I just forgot about them for a couple days and I let the cuttings dry out. And so what ended up happening was this, they fried, but you know, they were in the process of putting on some good roots. And you notice here, this one here, it already had roots and I just let it die. So, I mean, that kind of stuff happens sometimes. You forget about things and they're cutting. So I haven't really lost a whole lot. I can always take more cuttings from the same plant since it's in my garden. So that's actually what I did. I went out and I took another batch of cuttings so that I could demonstrate how well that works. It's very easy to do, but it's very easy to actually screw something up because you forget about it or you get busy. Maybe you're working too hard or something like that and you just completely forget about it. But anyway, I wanted to show you this other batch of cuttings and how well they're doing. And they took about the same amount of time as the other ones did, probably six weeks to a month to get to this stage right here you can see that little clump of sand i don't want to knock the sand off because i don't want to disturb the roots too much but you can see how well rooted that clump is i'm going to check out some of these others here i plan to pot these up later today there's a little bit of rooting on that one this one here is pushing for some new growth look at the green growth there at the top that's a good sign and it's got some little roots coming off the bottom now, if you recall, and I'll post the link in the description uh, where you can go back and look at that other video, but I took the cuttings off of a nodal cutting. Actually, I'm sorry, internodal cutting. Uh, you can do it either way. They will root actually between the internodes, and the internodes is that section between the two nodes. Some plants do it better from a node. Other plants will do it better from the middle section, or you can do it from the middle section. The advantage to doing it in that middle section called the internode is that you can actually do more cuttings. You don't have to be so careful as to where you're going to take that cutting at, and so you can get a whole lot more out of it. And with hydrangeas, that's what I would be working on. I'd be trying to get more rooting. This one's got some roots, but it's not really that established yet. So, but over here I've got one that has, check this out, the leaf actually died off of it. I'll just pull that off but it is starting to develop some roots there at the bottom okay there's some callusing you can see a little bit of a bump where all that sand is so that's what's happening there so I had a pretty good success rate with this batch the other batch not so much uh, they started to root they were doing great I kind of lost track of them forgot them a little bit um, a couple of them died they got some uh, some sort of a fungus on top of it which happens sometimes, and I sprayed it with neem oil, and then they came back. Uh, so that worked pretty well until I forgot about them. So just keep an eye on your hydrangea cuttings or any cuttings. Make sure that they don't ever completely dry out. You probably don't want them as moist as I've got them right now. The reason I have them that moist is so I can demonstrate how to pull them out without having, and, and so I don't actually weaken the roots. That one, look at that. That did really well. So this is kind of early. We are in kind of the back third of July right now. And they should have plenty of time to put on some roots before winter. And their growth will stop, of course, at that point. But we've got quite a few. I had a lot of success with this batch right here. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Looks like about 15 cuttings in this little batch. And... If you look at the size of the container I'm using here, it's small, it's tiny. I use sand again. I did not use rooting hormone, and it's fairly simple to do. Just go take some cuttings, stick them in some moist sand, and make sure that they stay moist. You can use misting if you want to, but you don't have to. So anyway, I hope that's helpful. Um, and I'm sorry I screwed up the first batch, but I wanted to make sure that I got this up here so that you could see the results of it and that it does actually work. It's so easy to do. I really highly encourage you to give it a shot if you've got hydrangeas around. And you can do this with all kinds.
I also wanted to check out these oak leaf hydrangea cuttings and see if they've done anything yet. So I'm going to just very gently pry them out and check that out. See what we got. We got some small little roots just starting. See that on the side? So I probably ripped these out too early. But that's okay. They've got those roots. So what I'll do is I'll just put them in here with my other ones. Since I've got a nice moist mix. I'll let them kind of mix together. And I'll see how this one does. Wow, this one's tight. So I'm going to loosen up the container just a little bit. See what we got. Nothing on that one. Oak leaf hydrangeas have always been a little bit harder for me to root than a regular hydrangea. I like them a lot. I'm just going to loosen up this one. I think I've got roots on it. Let's check it. It just feels... Oh yeah. Look at that. Right there. Now with the oak leaf hydrangeas, I did use rooting hormone. And they took probably about eight weeks to get to this stage. So uh, it looks pretty good. I will go back later today and I'll put these all in pots so that they can grow on and be some nice plants for us later on. So I'll go through and I'll pot up the oak leaf hydrangeas later today and get them into some individual little pots that I can grow them on and hopefully encourage some good leaf growth before fall hits. Uh, we're in July, so it looks like I've got another two good months of good growing time before they probably start to drop leaves and stuff. Um, these oak leaf hydrangeas I did use rooting home run on. Uh, it really helps speed up the process and whenever I have a plant that I find a little bit more challenging to root, I go with the rooting hormone. Uh, so definitely keep it in your arsenal of tools. So I've always found oak leaf hydrangeas to be a little bit more challenging to root than other plants. And I'm not sure why these actually rooted really well. I was kind of surprised I got three for three or actually two and a half. I'll say that one is just starting. But oak leaf hydrangeas, beautiful plants. They grow really well here in Tennessee. Uh, they can tolerate some sun, which is really good, you know, but they're also great in shade. I've got ours in a corner spot that's got full shade right now at this point. Uh, we've got two of them over there. I think one of them I planted from a layered cutting off of the original. Uh, so there's definitely multiple ways you can do it. If you don't have success with cuttings, think about layering because then you can you can put it down in the ground put a stem down there and then cover it with a rock where it's covering just a, a little bit of soil it'll eventually root it just takes a little bit of time it's a little bit longer of a process but it is more reliable so there's some pros and cons on that so I hope you enjoyed this update on on the hydrangea cuttings and I hope you find it something easy that you could probably do and get into and give it a shot and let me know how it goes in the comments somewhere uh, also, you know, please give me a like if this was helpful and subscribe because I'd like to have some more stuff coming along that hopefully will be interesting for you. Anyway, I'm Dave with Growing the Home Garden. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.